Welcome good people, my name is Joel Collier and today we're going to talk about two group analysis in SIM, Structural Equation Modeling, using the AMOS program. So one of the things um, you might want to look at when you're uh, understanding your uh, relationships between constructs is are there differences between groups within my sample? Uh, so you may initially be looking at does construct A influence construct B, but you might find that there are certain uh, groups within your sample that behave differently, and you want to statistically see are these different uh, are these different groups really significant uh, in their differences. So today we're going to kind of go over an example of this, how to assess it, and what to look for, uh, and just some things to. Uh, kind of understand moving forward on how to test two group analysis. So the model you see right here uh, is one we had taken from a restaurant setting uh, and the uh, the premise of the model is is uh, we had asked customers about their servers behavior and that did the if the server adapted their behavior to the customer did that lead to customer delight they're really delighted with the experience and that subsequently kind of influenced spreading word of mouth and even tolerance to even future failures possibly. And we also included another construct in there called service scape which is basically kind of the built environment around a service. So this had to do with was the setting very nice? Was it pretty average? Was it low? So did the the service scape if you will or the environment that was you know taking place around the service um, did it contribute to that kind of customer delight? And so initially we looked at this um, this model all together. We really didn't separate any of the sample out. We just wanted to see does adaptive behavior uh, lead to delight. And through this process we really kind of uh, came to the conclusion that we, we're probably best served using a two group analysis. Uh, because what we were starting to see was that first-time customers uh, were slightly different in their behavior than even kind of repeat customers. We had captured that if this was your first time in the restaurant, if we had been at that restaurant kind of multiple times. And so at that point, we wanted to see were these two groups kind of significantly different because it would tell a pretty interesting story for us as well, talking about, well, you know, if you adapt your behavior, it has a bigger impact if this is your first time in the restaurant versus if you're a repeat customer, it may not be as, uh, as important still important but not as important as really kind of the first time people who come with you. So we wanted to see uh, if those differences were um, significant statistically. So let's uh, jump into Amos here and we'll go kind of through the specifics. So you can see I've already set up my model, uh, my structural model where my two IVs, adaptive behavior and service capes leading to customer delight and then that will influence two ultimate DVs. So to do a two group analysis, the first thing you have to do in Amos is, is you have to specify the different groups. Up here at the top, you'll see where it says um, uh, a box, and if you just kind of highlight in that box, it'll say groups. And the first one it defaults to is group number one. Uh, and that's the default. If you don't specify a group, it'll put everything in together uh, and just call it group number one. So let's double click into that, and you'll see a pop-up window that will come up. It's called Manage Groups. And we're just going to call this group first time. So first time customers. Uh, and then we need another group for the repeat customers. So we're going to hit new down here, this button uh, called new for create a new group. And we'll call that second group repeat for repeat customers. Uh, and that's our two groups. So we're going to hit close. And so you can see up here, I've got two separate groups in my model now. The thing you also have to do after you specify the different groups is you have to read in the data for each group in Amos. So we're going to go into our select data file icon here uh, and that will pop up my data. So my data in this was called customer delight data um, and you can see I've got two groups here, a first time group and then a repeat group. The um, variable and you'll see value in here is where you're going to specify, let's say you had the, those different groups categorized within one sample. Well, you can come in here where it says grouping variable, and for me, I had it uh, separated by the the column called experience. 
and if I go to the grouping variable see it's a one and two uh, and actually for the first time customers I had those uh, coded as two probably would have made more sense to code it as a one but I didn't um, now the repeat customers if I had this data in a completely different data file it's fine you can use a completely different data file to read on this but if you had it within the same file then you're gonna have to kinda do what I just did with that finding that criteria where it's at within the data file so we're going to uh, bring in that customer delight data again and uh, it will default in there now since I've already put one in to two uh, it defaulted in with the other value with the experience. If it doesn't, then you're just going to have to go to the grouping variable, find that experience category, and then go to the grouping, uh, and then uh, denote which one that is. So for for our data set, first time customers were coded as a two, uh, and repeat customers were coded as a one. So now we have created the different groups, and we've read in the data file for each one of those. Uh, so that's kind of the first couple steps that you're going to need to do. The next thing that's uh, required to do a two group analysis is, is you have to label every parameter between constructs. So you've got to give them a name and they have to be uniquely different between each group. Now doing that by hand would be very burdensome, uh, pretty laborious. Thankfully, Amos has a button that does that for us though. So if we go to this little button where it says multi-group analysis down here, it looks like it's got the double-headed little icon. And we click on that, what it's going to do is it's going to label all of the parameters uniquely different across the groups that you just denoted. So if you click on that, it'll probably give you a warning label that says, hey, this program's going to remove any previous models that were in your um, in your uh, conceptualization it's just basically saying hey I'm gonna start over you know if you had something in here you might want to you know save it do whatever else because I'm basically going to rewrite over everything when it starts labeling all those we're just gonna hit OK so what this multi-group analysis does too is it will uh, it will label all of the parameters but it will also create these kind of uh, if you want to think about it kind of like mini tests uh, and you'll see like ones like measurement weights up here and what it does is it constrains all of the measurement weights from let's say the first time group and the repeat group and it it automatically does it for you it defaults in there now do I have to if I don't want that can I uncheck this box yeah absolutely but it's gonna give you these different options in here like uh, I'll constrain all measurement weights to be equal I'll constrain all structural weights to be equal across there and they're just going to give you all these different options now you can uncheck all those boxes I usually don't I just hit OK they'll give it to me you know it's not that big of a deal um, and then once you do that you can see it has labeled everything uh, in here all of the measurement weights are now labeled they're usually labeled with an A and a number uh, structural relationships are labeled with a B and a number B is in boy um, you'll see um, the differences between all of those across the two groups as well. So if you look at this first relationship of adaptive behavior to customer delight, uh, it has been labeled as a B1 underscore 1 for first time. So if we go up here and look at the repeat group, you can see now that label is B1 underscore 2. So it's still B1, but they uniquely kind of did it differently, so you'll know, like, hey, this is B1 underscore 1, which is first-time group. B1 underscore uh, 2 is still adaptive behavior to delight, but it's in the other group here, which is repeat, which makes it a little easier when you're trying to think, all right, what was the different labels across the different groups for a specific relationship? It kind of defaults that in there for you. And those uh, kind of tests I were telling you about, uh, that it kind of defaults up in there like constraining measurement weights they're all over here now you can see this the first one is unconstrained which means there's nothing being constrained across the groups here's this measurement went weights that I was talking to you about so if you look at this um, it's basically saying a1 underscore 1 equals a1 underscore 2 basically it constrained every measurement weight uh, all of the measurement weights are are A's like A5 underscore 2, A6, A7, A8, 
it constrained all of them to be uh, equal across the two. What we're going to find most of the time that what we're really concerned with when you're doing a two group analysis is not the, the total constraint across all relationships. So having all of the structural relationships you know in this model constrained to be equal across the two will tell me if there is a difference as a whole across the two groups because you've constrained every relationship. So it will look at them as a whole across you know one group and the other group and see are they significantly different but that doesn't really tell us a whole lot what we really want to see is is I want to see that is this specific relationship like that B1 right there I want to know is that relationship significantly different across the groups because I can't tell that if I constrain all of them at once I want to look at that particular one so I have to kind of set up one of my own kind of dedicated uh, little test in Amos to do that. So let's go over here to this very last little uh, setup um, uh, test that we have here. It's called measurement residuals. We don't really want that one. That one doesn't help us. And we're just going to hit the new button down here. And I'm going to call it just constrain one is what I'm going to call it. You can call it anything you want. It doesn't matter really. But I'm just going to call it constrain, constrain one. And what I'm going to do is I want to see is adaptive behavior to customers like that B1 uh, value is it different across the two so I'm gonna scroll down here I'm gonna find the B's alright that B1 underscore 1 and I'm gonna double click it and then I'm gonna double click the B1 underscore 2 you can see it you know put it up in here the parameter constraints where B1 is equal across both groups um, and so I'm gonna run a specific test just to see is this different across the two I'm going to do a chi-square difference test, so I'm looking across the constraint to see when I run a chi-square difference test with that being constrained, are they significantly different from one another? So just as kind of a heads up as well for future reference, um, to the value you're looking for in a chi-square difference test with one degree of freedom, right, that's one degree of freedom difference when I constrain that one path, is 3.84. Uh, so anything above 3.84 means that it is significant and at a 0.05 level. So I'm really looking to see in that chi-square difference test was that specific um, value across the two, the chi-square, is it more than 3.84? Because if it is, that means it's significant. So let's just run our analysis too and take a look before we even get to uh, are they different and just kind of see what it what it's showing us before we even get to the two group analysis here too so when we run this and we look at the estimates here um, down in the bottom uh, down here you'll see where your two groups are and the first one is that first time group so I'm seeing all of the regression weights that's coming out of this and the standardized regression weights all of that from that just that specific group of first time if I want to see the repeat ones, I'll just click on that uh, that uh, that value down there, and now here's all of the regression weights that are in uh, the repeat group. You can see initially just by uh, uh, you know from uh, initially just looking at it too that if we go down in the standardized regression weights, adaptive behavior to customer delight for first time was pretty strong standardized regression weight 0.65 with the repeat customers you can see well it's you know it's way less 0.3376 you know from adaptive behavior to customer delight but I can't just eyeball those differences and be like oh first-time customers are stronger than uh, repeat customers in regards to adaptive behavior to delight well no I don't know that uh, there's differences there but I can't just eyeball them and say that they're they're different or one stronger or weaker than the other without statistically kind of showing that. So I want to see that adaptive behavior to delight and see, yes, standardized regression weights, like there's a big difference there, but I want to see if it's statistically significant. So in our estimates, you know, we, we find all those regression weights. If we go down to the bottom, we're going to see something called model comparison down here. And that's where we want to click. We want to click on that one. So this model comparison uh, is going to give us 
uh, degrees of freedom, C min, which is chi square, uh, and it'll give you p values and it'll also give you model fit statistics if that's what you're looking for. And so here's all these kind of default tests that we had to begin with measurement, weights, construct, uh, constrained, structural weights, all this. Here's the one we actually created, right? The constrained one. And that constrained one with one degree of freedom, right? Anything over 3.84 means it's statistically significant. Right, where we're at 10.57 and you can see the p-value here is less than 0 0.001 so now we can go back and look at you know when we look at that adaptive behavior to delight we can say yes first-time customers were stronger than repeat customers and they were statistically uh, significant from one another so it was you know you can say they're relatively stronger from one another and even statistically and show kind of a chi-square difference test they have one degree of freedom now what if i wanted to actually look at you know b3 the next one you know well then i'll just go back into that constraint one and then i'll just kind of wipe that out and well this one's called b3 so we're just going to do the same thing again I'll do b3 underscore one b3 underscore two right then run the analysis again and so when we go back into the results what it's going to give us now in that model comparison is you know just for b3 which is that service scape to delight and this one you know we did not exceed 3.84 and you can see the p-values 0.415 which means they're not statistically different from one another across the group the service scape itself like how nice was the setting you know, really had no difference across the groups. Um, you know, statistically, like it didn't really influence them statistically different, uh, you know, from that perspective. So if I wanted to see, was delight different to tolerance of failure, word of mouth, it's the same process. I would just go in that constraint one, click it back up, and then, um, and change it out. And so that's kind of really how to do a two-group analysis uh, in uh, Amos uh, by initially forming your groups reading in your data and then uh, assessing what measurement you know through these kind of constrained models that you actually want to do uh, and then you can assess kind of the structural relationships and even if they are statistically significant from one another too now I covered this in somewhat kind of a, a brief overview fashion if you're looking for more information on multi-group analysis uh, more on the specifics uh, that you needed, uh, more on the details in here, citations, and even uh, multiple groups outside of more than just two. Uh, I'd encourage you to check out my book. There's kind of a detailed discussion in there that uh, talks about it. It gives you more kind of step-by-step, -step too, uh, if you need something to go back and have a reference for going forward. Um, that's all I got uh, for this week. I hope you all have a great week. Good people.